Foxborough, Massachusetts for today's game between the NFC Central Division leading Chicago Bears and the AFC's New England Patriots. The weather is typically New England with autumnal hues of amber and yellow in the tree line, but hints of winter with the temperature in the low 40s, expected to drop perhaps in the 30s by the end of this game, snow flurries maybe by this evening. And hello again, everybody. I'm Tim Brand, along with Hank Stram. And Hank, you've never looked better. The only problem, Tim, is those two pumpkins look better than these two pumpkins. <laughs> <laughs> and on this Halloween Eve, I guess it's safe to say the Bears look frightening. The question begs, can New England trick them? I don't think they can, Timmy. I think they have to play solid, sound football. I don't think they can beat the Chicago Bears unless they're able to run and then permit Flutie to play action and roll. They can't do that. If they can't run, they can't win the game. Chicago played Monday night. How about the short turnaround? Well, talking to the players, you know, Timmy, yesterday, they all seem to be a little tired physically. Whether they're emotionally tired remains to be seen, but I think they have to play the same kind of a game this week as they played Monday night, and that's going to be very difficult to do, but they have to be very emotionally involved in this game, too, to win it. All right, Hank, Chicago's on a five-game win streak, and the Bears' defense ranked number one in the NFL has held opponents to 10 points or less during that streak. First time that's happened since 1942. By the way, New England averages almost 16 points a game. Doug Flutie as a starter has never lost here in Sullivan Stadium. Kevin Butler to kick off, returning for New England. Sammy Martin and Marvin Allen. This one will be down by Martin. So the touchback, and they'll bring it out to the 20. How about that on the kickoff team? There's Harbaugh, the third-string quarterback, Hank. When I see him, I think of another quarterback who used to like to play, and especially teams we didn't let him. That's Bobby Douglas, the great quarterback of the Chicago Bears from a year, few years ago. He was always tugging on my coattail, trying to get in the game any way he could. Well, of course, Harbaugh says that he felt worthless on the sidelines. He was dying, wanted to play, wanted to contribute. He's a gutsy guy, and they put him on the special teams. Good look at Doug Flutie. Stevens and Perriman in the backfield. Flutie to throw, first down, wide open. To the 25. Touchdown, New England, no flags. 80 yards. Flutie to Fryer. Happy Halloween. like Bambi on that play. The extra point attempt is no good. And so Starowski, Jason Starowski, who just signed this week, is 0 for 1 on PATs. Here we go. Look at Fryer. Jackson looking to the inside, not paying any attention at all to Fryer coming down the field. No way he can cover that way with it back to the sideline. And uh, Fryer makes the catch, turns back to the inside, goes right down the middle of the field, and uh, touchdown, New England. Fryer's the Pats' leading receiver, his 22nd catch of the year. From scrimmage, Flutie to Fryer, 80-yard pass, the longest of Flutie's career. And the fourth touchdown catch of the year for Fryer. Extra point was blocked, and it's 6 nothing New England. Garcia kicks this one off. Gentry's up to the 15. Buckles the ball. It's loose. Bears get it back. Twenty-yard return. Douglas made the recovery. Dan Hampton, number 99, right in the middle of the screen, is the one who blocked the kick. Watch him come up over the top. Watch the hand come up, knock the ball, deflect the ball, and it doesn't get over the goalpost. Dan Hampton, 99. Well, the ball was loose. I think we should mention two weeks ago, the Patriots were minus 13 in the giveaway takeaway. They're now minus three as you look at Jim McMahon. The lone setback is Matsui. 
twin receivers to the bottom of the screen. Single receiver to the top on first down. This is Ron Morris on the reverse. Big hole out across the 30 to the 37-yard line. And that's where Johnny Rempert makes the tackle. Let's set that defensive lineup for you. Up front, Brent Williams, Tim Goad, and Edmund Nelson. Garen Barris is out at right end, and you can be sure that that's where the Bears will run. Tippett, Brown, Rembert, and McGrew, the linebackers. And in the secondary, LePet, longtime veteran Claiborne, Marion, and Roland James. Morris picked up 19 on that reverse. First down, ball on the 39. Same formation, twin receivers, bottom of the screen. New England shows blitz. This is Neil Anderson, and he's taken down at the line of scrimmage. Good play out there by Lawrence McGrew. <laughs> Offensively, reminder the Bears did play Monday night. Jim McMahon, Neil Anderson, said he was tired in practice late this week because of the Monday night game. Suey, Gentry Morris, the wideouts. Emory Moore had the oldest Bear as the tight end. And up front, Wojciechowski, Ports, Hilgenberg, Thayer, and Van Horn. Moorhead goes out of the game now. James Thornton comes in at tight end. Matsui goes to the wing at the bottom of your screen. Morris in motion. Second down. This pass to the flats. And Suey's not going anywhere. There is a flag, however. Roland James got there first from his strong safety position. We'll wait to see what the flag is. As you look at Mike Ditka. Four consecutive winning seasons for the Bears. That's the first time that's happened since George Hallis in the 50s. High unnecessary roughness. Late hit number 42 on the defense. 15 yards, first down. Ronnie LePet, number 42, is called for that personal foul. Here's what uh, we think going into the game about the game plan. Chicago must possess the ball for about 35 minutes. Number two, they must run 40 times and pass 25. And number three, they must keep Flutie in the pocket. Raymond Berry has a 37-26 regular season record, but he's 0-2 against NFC Central Division teams this year. He lost to Minnesota and Green Bay. First down at the 45 for the Bears. Morris again in motion. McMahon with time almost has this one picked off. Poorly thrown. Vincent Brown was in the neighborhood. As a matter of fact, he was closer to it, Hank, than Ron Morris. And we just saw J Jim McMahon point to the sideline and say, it was my fault, it was a bad throw. Watch now. Here's McMahon going back into the pocket and throws the ball poorly way behind, way behind Morris, a badly thrown ball. Gentry comes to the bottom of the screen, Morris to the top. The setbacks, Anderson and Suey. This is Neil Anderson. Big hole to the outside of the 35. Inside the 20 and knocked out of bounds at the 14-yard line. Finally by Roland James, the safety. 31-yard pickup by Neil Anderson. And Hank, he didn't look tired on that one. He surely didn't. Thayer, the right guard, made a beautiful block. It was a counter play, counter trap. Gets a good block on the defensive end and the linebacker. And Anderson gets through there in good shape. It looks like Gentry also made a very fine block downfield. It provided Anderson with the opportunity to make the big play. Neil Anderson told us last night the New England linebackers box you in, but that puts pressure on the secondary. And that's what he did that time, cut it up. First down at the 15. to the 13-yard line. Good hit there by Tim Goad. The rookie out of North Carolina. They ran another counter play that time with Bortz pulling the left guard and also Wojciechowski. Wojciechowski is limping a little bit. He's having a little trouble with a bad knee. Had that knee drained earlier this week. And how long can you do that? I know that feeling very well. Second down, they'll call it the 13. Need eight. They're going to 
going to come right if they run. Morris in motion, straight drop back by McMahon. Has time underneath, this is Morris. Morris to the 11-yard line, Johnny Rembert will get credited with that tackle. Rempert is really playing well. They're very high on the way this young linebacker has performed so far. Even though they've had a disappointing year, they like the way he's played. He's 6'3", 234 pounder, six-year veteran out of Clemson. Third down and six at the 11 for the Bears. First third down of this drive. Suey goes to the wing. Morris in motion. Anderson will fly to the flats. McMahon throws. Intercepted. Lippet has it at the four. Penalty three offense. Penalty declined. First down the other way. So the penalty is declined. The interception will stand. Here we see the play again. Williams is coming hard on the outside, provides McMahon with the opportunity to go inside of the defensive end. The ball is deflected, and LePet, number 42, comes up for the interception. 11 New England turnovers in the last three games. Doug Flutie's come from behind win over the Colts four weeks ago. Jim McMahon had this quote. Who? Oh, Bambi. He's America's midget again. You guys send that quote to New England for me. Here's what Doug Flutie and Jim McMahon say now about a seemingly strained relationship. I said some things a couple years ago when he came to Chicago that I felt that we didn't need him. Uh, we had a couple of guys that had played well for us, and uh, you know I'll stick by that. I didn't think we needed him at the time, and, and I got nothing against Doug Flutie as a person. But, uh, you know, I didn't feel that he was uh, going to help our football team. Right away when I went out there, it was a situation where they felt they had a couple of capable quarterbacks and Steve Fuller and Mike Tomczak, and that they didn't really need somebody from the outside. Not that it was Doug Flutie. They just didn't need someone from the outside coming in. And I think Jim also said that, uh, you know, he had nothing against me personally. It was just the situation. All right, on first down, Stevens. Finds the going tough, gets a couple around the right side. You know, it's very, very unusual. I was on the field before the game talking about the Bears and Flutie, and I was um, kind of pleased and somewhat surprised to see how many Bear players came running over to Doug Flutie and grabbed him and hugged him and seemingly were very, very happy to see him. So there had to be a lot of good feelings about him from a lot of other people. Stevens and Perriman in the backfield with Flutie. Fryer in motion. Second down and seven. Stevens out to the nine yard line, maybe the ten. Hampton in on the tackle along with Troy Johnson who's making his first NFL start today. At the defensive front, Al Harris, Steve McMichael, Dan Hampton, and Richard Dent. The linebackers, Rivera, Singleton, and Troy Johnson, we just mentioned, first NFL start. We'll talk more about that position in just a second. Richardson, Jackson, David Tate starts today. He's out of Colorado. And, of course, Dave Dewars in the strong safety. Third down and five. The ball at the ten. John Stevens right side. Ball's loose. Still loose. The Bears get it back. First turnover in three games now in the giveaway category for New England. Al Harris is the man who recovered the fumble for Chicago. Hank, I've got to believe if New England has any shot, they can't turn it over. No, they can't. That's one of the things we thought coming into the game and mentioned. They have a blitz. Durison is trying to blitz in a play. Stevens is running to the right side. Gets a, gets a block by Farrell gets hit at, right after he gets through the line of scrimmage the ball bounces around Jackson kicks it around like a volleyball like a soccer ball and is finally recovered by Al Harris number 90 the hit was made by Den he knocked it loose Hank so good play by the Bears all the way around defensively first down and 10 ball on the 24 for Chicago 
This is Neil Anderson. Again, cuts it back inside, inside the 20. And we'll keep an eye on what Neil Anderson told us last night about the outside people boxing it in, forcing you to go inside into the secondary. And Anderson, quite frankly, was honest with us and told us New England secondary people are not good tacklers. I think that's the feeling around the league, really, that the, uh, the defensive backs, all of them, really don't do a good job of tackling in the open field especially. Fullwood of Green Bay had a field day against this defense. Second down and four at the 18. Kozlowski and Davis now come into the ball game and are split wide for Chicago. This is Anderson. Good tackle by Johnny Rembert, number 52. Rembert really got the good angle and, and really used the shoulder pads extremely well. Gave him a good shot from the inside linebacker position. Eight minutes, 30 seconds remain. First period, 6-0 Patriots if you're just joining us. Doug Flutie, 80-yard touchdown pass to Irving Fryer on the first play from scrimmage. It took 18 seconds. Irving Fryer will tell you that he ran it faster than that, of course. Third down and two, the ball in the 16 for Chicago. Sweep left, Suey has the first down. It goes out of bounds just outside the 10. They'll mark it at the 11. You know, the point you made, Tim, about the tackling in the backfield, it's very obvious that Bears feel that way because they keep running outside from right to left more than I really thought they would, and they're trying to make those defensive back make the tackle. Neil Anderson got a good block on the corner that time to open it up for Matt Suey. Suey had eight carries for 27 yards and a touchdown Monday night. Field position and turnovers are important only if you get points on the scoreboard after you get the opportunity. First down, Chicago, ball at the 11. High formation. Forehead in motion, power eye to that side with Anderson. He tiptoes down to the seven-yard line. That's where Marion and McGrew come up and make the stop. Van Horn that time looked like he got a good block on the defensive end, Williams. Hank, this is a banged-up New England defense. They lost both starting defensive ends, Garen Barris, we mentioned last week with a knee injury. Kenneth Sims is out for the season with a ruptured Achilles tendon. Second down and six. Ball on the seven. The Wigman shows man coverage. And the give is inside to Anderson. To the one-yard line. Some of the Bears wanted a touchdown, did not get the signal from the officials, so it'll be less than one. Roland James made the tackle there. Watch Hilgenberg, the center, his block on Rembert, number 42. Uh, 52, Rembert, 6-3 blocking him, provides good running room, and almost got it all the way in the end zone for the touchdown. That kind of running seems to be, to me, would be more effective than going sideways. Tim. Anderson, 7 carries, 49 yards. First down and goal, Chicago. Anderson, left side. defensive pursuit. Andre Tippett got there first. He had help from Lawrence McGrew. Offside, 56 defense. Half the distance for the least score first down. That's Andre Tippett. Maybe that's why he got there so quickly. I don't know why they'd run at him in that situation. He's already proven that he's a great linebacker. No use trying to enhance his reputation, is there? <laughs> hey, half the distance of the goal won't hurt him here either. No, that's right. Remains first down and goal. Everybody tight, two tight ends. Wings this side. Muster in motion. And McMahon gets stuffed. And they call it a touchdown. Touchdown, Chicago. I want to tell you, Hank, he still got stuffed. He did. He got hit. He barely, he barely crossed the plane on the quarterback sneak. 
fans don't like it as they show the replay on the big screen in the end zone. Here we see the line takeoff. You, you watch McMahon go over the top. It's hard to tell, but evidently the ball just has to cross the plane. And it, That's the key, Hank. Yep, just had the rule to says the ball has to cross the plane, not his helmet. That's right, not his body, not anything else, just the ball, and it obviously it crossed the plane. Butler's extra point is good. I'm not sure. The helmet obviously did. You couldn't see the ball. We'll be back. The penetrating force of Roger Craig and the Niners, next on CBS Sports. All right, here we go. Watch the circle and watch the center, Hilgenberg. The right guard there and the left guard, Bortz. They get a good push and just enough for Jim McMahon to cross the plane with the ball. And that's the important thing. Touchdown, Chicago Bears. Kevin Butler to kick off for Chicago. Low kick, hits and bounces. And it's taken by Marvin Allen. Allen across the 20 and run out of bounds on the 22-yard line by Lorenzo Lynch of the Bears. Set that offensive lineup for you as the New England offense comes back onto the field. Doug Flutie's the quarterback. Stevens and Perryman, the running backs. Morgan and Fryer, the wideouts, and Lynn Dawson. 240-pounder is the tight end. Up front, Via Farrell, Babb, Wooten, and Armstrong. Mike Babb came here in September, obtained from the Cleveland Browns. First down and 10, they mark it at the 23. Five minutes, 52 seconds remaining. First quarter. Stevens and Perriman are the setbacks for Flutie. Let's listen. Go again to Fryer. Left side again is working. On Bestie Jackson, it's complete out to the 46 yard line. You talk, you talk about a great throw from the quarterback, Flutie, to Fryer right over the defensive back. Look at Jackson, 24, man-for-man -man cover, trying to give him a push, and he gets knocked off the course in the process of trying to get the push, and uh, as a result, the ball is thrown right over the top, and Fryer makes the catch. A beautiful throw by Flutie. Fryer goes out, Morgan and Jones now. Twin receivers, bottom of the screen. First down, New England. This is Stevens. It's a block for Perryman. And picks up eight yards before he's finally knocked out of bounds by Troy Johnson, the rookie. There's a Patriot game plan. They must run at the Bears, and they're talking about straight at the defense, not so much sideways. Number two, they must make big plays and take advantage of the opportunities on one-for-one -one coverage and must not have a turnover. Why are they working on Bestie Jackson? Well, I think the common feeling is that he is uh, not the best cover guy in the world, especially when they can get him on one-on-one -on, -one on bump and run. Second and short. Stevens breaks the tackle and lunges forward for the first down. Rivera and Singletary will get credit with the tackle. Stevens will get credit for the first down run. You know, But, you know, uh, the amazing thing about Flutie, we talked to him yesterday and asked him if he had a chance to throw the ball 30 times, what would be the ratio between pocket and rollouts? He said, I'd like to throw it from the pocket 20 times and maybe 10 outside, which was a surprise to me. Stevens carries down to the 35-yard line. They're moving the ball effectively on the ground, and it's against the NFL's number one defense. Bears, of course, first against the run. Farrell that time pulled and got a good block on the counter play. But this is one thing that uh, the Bears have to be concerned about. If they don't stop this run, they're going to be in trouble because it's going to the run is going to set up the play action and the movement by design by Flutie, and that's going to create a lot of problems for the Bears. Interesting up here, Hank. Isn't it? If folks believe in Doug Flutie, they just think he's a miracle worker. Second and four. Again, they go to the run, but they'll stop this play. Flags fly everywhere. Well, Smith, 73 offense, five yard penalty, still second down. That's Danny Villa. 
the left tackle out of Arizona State. So it'll be second down and nine for New England. Flutie in the pocket, going deep again for Fryer. And a flag flies. There's going to be interference called. Again, it was Irving Fryer and Bestie Jackson banging on the sideline. We'll wait to see who this one's against. But the reaction of the Patriots, especially Fryer, looks like it may go against the Bears. And obviously, Timmy, I think that the fact that uh, Doug Flutie was with the Bears, he obviously knows a lot about the defensive backs, and he probably told the coach... Number 27 defense. Number 24 defense. Five yard penalty. Automatic first down. Well, he said Mike Richardson, 27. He wasn't in the neighborhood. Then he corrected it, and it is against Bestie Jackson. But here again, he obviously went back and said the guy to pick on is Bestie Jackson. Here you see him coming, looking back for the ball. And he gave him a shot in the process of going down the field, and that's why they call the penalty. How about the referee today? Gordon McCarter, one turnover already, but he corrected it. First down for Flutie. We see his first scramble. Gets a good block from the corner. Takes this one down inside the 35. Whoa, what a block by Bruce Armstrong, the second-year player out of Louisville. He gets flushed out of the pocket. Now watch Bruce Armstrong, number 78, the right tackle. There he is, and now he's coming back down the line of scrimmage and gets a block while well, he was in the process of falling in here on McMichaels. But Flutie, Flutie is something, isn't he? Hey, don't tell that to Bruce Armstrong. He's an emotional guy. He's going to say he pancaked him. Yeah. He doesn't want to hear any of that slip stuff. This will be the sixth play of the drive, second and seven. Flutie throws this one deep for Morgan incomplete. I talked to, talking to Raymond Berry yesterday again about Flutie. We asked him, what kind of passes do you think he throws best? Surprisingly again, he came back and he said he likes the things he throws best are the long passes, the streaks up the field, the flag patterns, and the post patterns, which was another surprise. On a great football day in New England, Sullivan Stadium, Foxborough, Massachusetts, Tim Brandt and Hank Stram with you. And thus far, with 3.41 remaining first quarter, it has, in fact, been exciting. First play of the game, Flutie to Fryer for a touchdown. Pats missed the extra point, and then McMahon scored on a quarterback sneak. And four wide receivers now for New England on third down and seventh. This ball overthrown. It was intended for Stanley Morgan. Again, Hank, they were working on Vesty Jackson. They're giving him a lot of business, no question about that. Watch him come off the ball. There's Morgan breaking out the outside. Jackson gives him a shove. The ball is a little bit high. Goes incomplete, but again, had the ball been thrown properly, he had a chance to make the catch. It looked catchable, though. Jeff Beagles now will come on to punt, and the crowd doesn't like that. Wendell Davis is back to return, but the ball is on the 32-yard line. Certainly within field goal range, you would think at least for Teddy Garcia. And he never tries to kick the ball out of bounds, Timmy. He tries to get it up in the air to make him catch it and down it close to the end zone. Davis fields this one inside the 10 to the 6 and returns it to the 10. The tackle was made by Daryl Holmes. So on a strange turnover play, 26-yard punt, 4-yard return, and the Bears will take over offensively. <laughs> Wide receivers out to the right. Flutie flushed. Throws it down. Caught by Boston College. I don't believe it. Oh. It's a touchdown. <laughs> the Eagles win it. So as you look back into the window of time, you see the reason they believe in his magic here in New England. And now it's the defensive turn to 
turn up the heat. Rembert makes the tackle on first down against the Bears. And Tim, so far, Chicago has run the ball ten times and passed it only four times, which is another indication that they really want to control the line of scrimmage and keep the ball away from uh, New England as much as they possibly can. Anderson gets back to the original line of scrimmage. It'll be second down and ten for Chicago. Gentry and Morris are the wideouts. Moorhead in motion. This is Neil Anderson. Has the corner. He'll be knocked out of bounds at the 18. He'll be short of a first down, though, by about two. Vincent Brown will be credited with the tackle there. They would like they would like to run the ball as much as they possibly can, talking about Chicago. And I think uh, one of the reasons they like to run the ball, they're very realistic about what their offensive situation is. Uh, I don't think they feel that they're uh, an extremely good pass-blocking team. And as a result, they want to run the ball as much as they possibly can and also set up the play-action pass so they can provide better opportunities for the offensive line of the block. Anderson has nine carries for 50 of those yards. It's third down and two, Chicago. McMahon with pressure in the middle. Has the ball incomplete. Oh, I thought Gentry made the tackle and look, so did he. Or made the catch, rather. He didn't drive him back far enough, talking about Gentry on Claiborne. you got to drive him off a little bit, come back for the ball. Take another look, Hank, and see why he thought he made the catch. Yeah, let's take a look here. Now, here's Gentry, here's Claiborne. Good coverage. Now, see, he's behind him, but uh, he doesn't have as much of a cushion as I, as he should to see make the ball that hit catch. The, the coverage was good. The ball did hit the ground. Ryan Wagner comes on to punt. Irving Fryer is deep for New England. High spiraling punt turns over. Fryer will take it at the 35. Turns it to the 35-yard line in Chicago territory. Troy Johnson made the tackle there. But a 30-yard return after a 47-yard punt. This is the Bear nickel package. We'll show you some of the defenses of Chicago's. Todd Crum and Maurice Douglas come into the defensive backfield in this. Rivera and Troy Johnson go out. Singletary stays at linebacker. Then the Buffalo Bear, five down line, and Shapura comes in, and Crone stays in at defensive back. First down, the ball at the 35. This is Stevens. He runs out of bounds at the 31-yard line. Tough going on that corner, though, Hank. It is, but that's the advantage of running from the I formation. That play was designed, really, to go inside, but it was all plugged up and he jumped to the outside, which permits him to do that because he's about seven yards deep in the backfield. Get a shot of his eyes there as he's looking to take the ball. The quarterback's responsibility is to make sure he gets the football. You see him head up the field and around the corner, and finally is the run out of bounds. He's led the Patriots in rushing seven of eight games, second and six at the 31. Again, this is Stevens. Good cut inside. First down, Patriots at the 21. Be and Farrell just blowing folks out on that side. It's the offensive line play, Hank. Watch the left guard and the left tackle. Via pulling on the play number 73 and gets a good block downfield. And Stevens pops right through there for another big game. Stevens now has eight carries and 40 yards. We were showing you the Buffalo Bear defense, five linemen. That's what Washington used against Chicago last year when Flutie was quarterback and put that big wall of five guys in front of him. But now New England's had success running the ball. This is Perry inside the 20 to the 17-yard line. Here we see a good shot of Mike Singletary, the quarterback on defense. Watch. He's under control, avoids the block, and is finally blocked and then makes the play. 
But what a great middle linebacker, as everybody knows. Intense. A lot of the players say they've never seen a more intense football player ever than Singletary. Second and seven, Stevens right side. Hit almost immediately by Ron Rivera. You see the time remaining in the first quarter. And the reason I think that the New England is trying to run and doing it so efficiently, the, the defensive ends of the Chicago Bears are very wide because they want to contain Flutie. The linebackers are inside of the ends, and as a result, there's a big cavity there, and they're striking in that area. Troy Johnson comes out of the ball game now, along with Ron Rivera. You know, and talking about that five-man line, the Buffalo Bear... Flutie said he just came out of a meeting the other day when we saw him and was looking at the Washington Redskins game of a year ago where Washington used it against him. And that's the end of the first quarter. With a score, the Bears 7, the Patriots 6. Who could ask for anything more? Prudential Bait Securities, rock solid, market wise, and by the good time, great taste of McDonald's. The temperature has dropped now into the low 40s. There is a slight breeze on the field, however, and the Patriots just let the clock run out there at the end of the first quarter so they could have the wind at their backs in case they don't get this third and seven and want to kick a field goal. Resting on the 18, Chicago. Five defensive backs now, and five men up front. Singletary is the lone linebacker. Trip receivers now, three receivers to the top of your screen. Flutie has plenty of run to room. And he roams down to the 12-yard line. Mike Singletary makes the tackle there. He'll be close to a first down, Hank. I'm not sure if he got it. But. I don't think he did, but it's, it'll be close to me. And I think, you know, anytime they use that Buffalo Bear defense, why, they're going to wind up with man-for-man -man coverage. There is a flag. You see Flutie's reaction. But he did have plenty of room to roam. I think he was disturbed because he didn't, he wasn't decisive on the cut. Offside, 99 defense. Five yard penalty, That's Dan Hampton called for that penalty. And so obviously, New England will take the penalty and bring up third down and two. The numbers on Hampton. Four time Pro Bowler. Back in his natural position now after years at defensive end. Third down and two. The ball at the 13 for New England. Flutie rolls left, cuts inside, throws, touchdown New England. Lynn Dawson. was being pulled down 13 yard touchdown to Dawson there's a great illustration Tim people say he's too short to throw over the top of people nobody throws over the top of people you throw between people and he threw on the inside of Richard Dent that time even though he had a piece of him he got rid of the ball beautifully and threw the touchdown pass to Dawson Jason Storowski's extra point is good Watch this now, rolling out to his left. Look at Dent. He throws it inside. Say Dent between Dent. There's a big alley there. He doesn't have to throw over the top of anybody. He throws between them and gets the ball right on the money to Dawson. An incredible throw by Doug Flutie. Play on the first 
play of the game. Flutie to Fryer set the tempo here. Then after a New England turnover, the Bears came back and took them six plays after a turnover, though, deep in their territory, New England's territory. And look at the numbers on Flutie. He just hit Lynn Dawson with a 13-yard touchdown, and it's 13 to 6 with 14-20 remaining. 13 to 7, rather, with 14-20 remaining in the first half. This is Dennis Gentry. And he's nailed at the 20-yard line. Mosi to Tapu. To Tupu. This team is playing like they talked. I mean, you know, talking to all the New England players, they were very serious. And they felt strongly about the fact that they would play a good game this afternoon. And so far, they are playing a very good game. It's a long way from being over, but they're playing extremely well so far. Of course, Mosi Tutupu is a longtime veteran, 11 years at a Southern Cal, and he excels on those special teams. Tutupu's tough. First down at the 22. Oslowski and Davis, the wideouts for Chicago. Sanders and Musker in the backfield. This is Sanders, and he's going to be thrown for a loss. Johnny Rembert. obviously into it and so are the Patriots it'll be second and 15 for the 17 yard line for Jim McMahon and the Bears Sanders cuts back to the 22 yard line was hit by a whole host of Patriots led by Raymond Claiborne now watch Rembert number 52 a draw play comes up gets blocked tries to make the tackle Sanders gives him a straight arm and he misses the tackle comes back though with an effort and still misses him the second time gets a shoulder but doesn't make the tackle Sanders showed some strength he's 203 pounds Rembert 235 Four wide receivers for Chicago. Out of the shotgun, McMahon has pressure. The pressure came from Brent Williams. The pass was incomplete to Morris. You know, and Brent Williams talking to him yesterday, he said during the offseason that he got all the films of all the great defensive ends in the National Football League study them carefully so that he can improve his pass rush. Evidently, it's done some good. McMahon now just two of six for four yards as you look at Brian Wagner. Irving Fryer is deep for New England. And he's standing on his own 36-yard line. A low wobbly kick like a knuckleball. But it's effective and it'll roll down to the 35-yard line. Twelve minutes, seventeen seconds remain in the half. It's thirteen to seven, New England. A look at Jim McMahon with twelve seventeen remaining in the first half, and they're working on McMahon's leg. Tom Zack and Harbaugh, the backup quarterbacks, are both warming up. We'll get more on that for you. First down at the 36. Two tight ends, Dawson and Russ Francis in the ballgame now for New England. Stevens carries up to the 37-yard line. Troy Johnson trips him up. How about that, Hank? How much does this team change without McMahon? Well, in the past, you know, if history means anything, they haven't been very effective without McMahon at the quarterback position. Of course, McMahon has that unique ability to improve the performance of those around him. Second and eight from the 38 for New England. Again, Stevens cuts it back 
to the 43-yard line. Dave Duerson makes the tackle. Look at Singletary, watch his eyes. You talk about concentration. You talk about intensity. Watch him. He gets blocked here by Via. But he's in a good position. He's still in a good position. Singletary led the Bears Monday night with nine tackles. Here it's third and three. The ball at the 43. Stevens bangs his way and spins and turns to the 47-yard line. And he really laid a lick on Ron Rivera. Hey, coming up next, the second game of our NFL doubleheader. Most of you will see Minnesota at San Francisco, while the others will see the New York Giants against Detroit. That's all coming up next on CBS Sports. You know, as you watch this game, as you watch this game and you wonder, some people wonder, why are they running at the Bears who are the number one team in the league? They're running at them because they're sack, very sack happy. The Bears are. They do a great job there. They want to make him run, play the run instead of what they do best. First down, Stevens tries to get outside, take the corner. He does successfully into Bear territory before Vesty Jackson and Mike Singletary trip him up at the 49-yard line. Hank, the word off the Chicago bench is that Jim McMahon has a strained knee and it's doubtful right now that he'll return. Well, their plan, from a plan standpoint, you know, they plan to come into the game with the idea of running the football and if, uh, if that continues to be the plan, why, it really won't make a whole lot of difference who the quarterback's going to be. Second down and six. Stevens fights for that extra yard. He'll be just shy of the first. Richard Dent wrestles him down there. Here again, I want to talk a little bit more about the running of the New England Patriots. The Chicago Bears defense come into this game with uh, 27 sacks, 24 and a half of which have been made by the defensive line. So it's obvious they like to do that. They do that extremely well. They're going to make them play against the run as much as they can to slow down the rush and then be able to throw play action and throw the ball at the right time. Well, you see what the defense has done. Of course, they led the league in sacks last year, but they're also number one against the rush. Dupart and Perryman now in the backfield. And I don't think he's going to get there on third down and short. He'll be close to the first, goes Reggie Dupart. But it'll bring up fourth down. Crowd wants New England to go for it. What would you do, Hank? If it's less than a yard, with the momentum of the game like it is right now, I would go for it, less than a yard. I think they feel good about what they're doing up front. And I think from a coaching standpoint, you know, from an in intuitive standpoint, I think you got to say, okay, you guys got confidence, I got it too. Go ahead and go for it. Well, the crowd loves this because they are going to go for it. Two tight ends, Dawson and Francis. Power formation for New England on fourth and short. Stevens. The crowd told you he got it. Here again, there's a time and place to do that kind of thing. But in this situation, that was the correct thing, not only because he made the first down, but because of the way the game is going. Stevens now, 15 carries, 63 yards. Here's the handoff and a good hole, he, a cutback by Stevens, cuts back into the open area. It's finally tackled by a host of bears, but not until after he made the first down. Singletary got the first shot. Stevens gets a breather now. Reggie Dupart comes into the ball game for New England. First down for Flutie. Throws a wobbler, and it's almost intercepted incomplete. It was intended for Reggie Dupart. It'll be second down and ten. Clouds continue to roll in. They're predicting snow flurries for later this afternoon as the temperature continues to drop here at Sullivan Stadium. Tim Brandt and Hank Stram with you. 
two touchdown passes for Doug Flute. He started the game, first play, 80-yard touchdown to Fryer, came back and hit Lynn Dawson with a 13-yard touchdown pass. Dawson's first touchdown catch since 1984. Second down and 10. Flutie going deep. Cedric Jones almost had it incomplete. Good coverage that time by Vesty Jackson, Hank. Watch Jackson. And again, Flutie throws the ball a long way. I don't think people realize that his arm is as strong as it is. Here you see the takeoff. Jackson looking into the backfield. Looking into the backfield with his back to the sideline. Keeps looking to the inside. The ball is up in the air. The coverage is good. He's right there with him, man for man. But there was a chance that the ball could have been caught. But the timing of the jump wasn't proper. Third and ten. Six defensive backs for the Bears. Stanley Morgan wanted pass interference. No flags. And Hank, they continue to work on Vesty Jackson. And there again, that has to, I mentioned it earlier, but I'll mention it again, that has to be uh, influenced a little bit by the association that Doug Flutie had with the Bears. Knowing their secondary, he said he's the guy to go after. Here we see it again. Morgan on Jackson. It looks like he pushed off a little bit with the left hand, and they didn't see that. Did you see that, Tim? Sure did. Jeff Beagle's now back to punt. Wendell Davis deep for Chicago. Beagles calls this his punt bunt. Ball's loose. Patriots have it. Darrell Holmes, but they'll call it back. It'll be New England ball on the 12. They can't advance it. going to keep that ball. Now look at Mike. Shot at Mike Ditka, Hank. Really upset with that play. Here's Davis back there. It's a bad, it's, it's not a fair, it's, it's a fair kiss signal, but not a legal one. And with all the traffic around there, he should have just signaled for the fair catch if he's going to do that and make the catch. It was very bad judgment on Davis's part. And it's easy to understand why Ditka is massaging his ears with some verbal abuse on the sideline. Well, I think we should mention that Wendell Davis hadn't returned punts seriously since high school. He did some in the preseason, but with Dennis McKinnon out for the Bears, Davis was forced into duty and he just muffed it. The play was resumed. No problem. Continue play. See, he didn't even know how to make the fair catch. The valid fair catch is you got to put your hand up above your head and move your hand back and forth. He just put it up and put it back down, which was an invalid fair catch. This is the second time New England started a drive in Bear territory. First down at the 13. Stevens breaks two tackles, gets back to the line of scrimmage, maybe gets an extra yard before Dave Dewerson can take him to the turf. Look at Dave Dewerson. Got that right thigh heavily taped. And he's a tweener. He's a tweener. By that I mean he's between a linebacker and also a defensive back, a safety man. He plays up very much like a linebacker so much of the time. Is a great tackle. Led the team in tackles last year. He's tied for second right now. Second and eight. Down to the five yard line. Ron Rivera tripped him up, but he's running with authority. He ran for 134 yards and 25 carries last week, Hank. Yeah, and Sean, Sean uh, got a great block in the left guard on Troy Jackson. Farrell. Number 62, really got a good block on the linebacker pair on uh, Troy Johnson. Third down and three, the ball at the six. Fryer in 
motion. This is Stevens. Inside the five to close to the three. David Tate and Mike Singletary make this stop. But he'll be close to another New England first down. There was another good illustration of running from the left halfback position all the way across the formation. There was a big cavity on the inside. He couldn't make the cut well enough to take advantage of it. Had it been the eye formation, it might have been a touchdown. They're going to bring out the chains for this one. And look at Singletary. The ball is resting just outside the three. Just that far. They went for it just minutes ago and made it. Flutie saying go this time. See who does the best selling job on the coach on here this time. Here's Singletary. Watch him respond, trying to get the good angle. Sifts through the traffic. Comes in there and gets a piece of the tackle. Four minutes, 50 seconds remain in the half. 13 to seven Patriots. It's fourth down and less than one. We might see a quarterback option of some kind of rollout in this situation. Let's see what they do. Here it is. Flutie. There it is, boys. Touchdown. There's a flag. Lynn Dawson's second touchdown of the afternoon. There is a flag. It's against Hampton. The touchdown stands. Three touchdown passes for Doug Flutie. Jason Starofsky comes on for the extra point. He's one of two this afternoon. Fiegels is the holder. This one's good. Well, they haven't used their tight end very much this year in New England. But now Lynn Dawson has two touchdown catches. Here you see the fake floating. This is something he does so well. Rolls to the outside of the containment. Dawson wide open in the end zone for the touchdown. First three touchdown game of Flutie's career. That is not a misprint. It's 20 to 7 New England with 431 remaining in the first half. Garcia kicks off. This will be taken by Gentry. To the 20 yard line. Watch, Dan, watch Hampton number 99 in the circle and watch they have seven defensive linemen in the game which makes this a perfect play fakes inside rolls Hampton has a shot but he runs right around the outside nobody at all on Dawson and he goes into the end zone for the touchdown first time Dawson has ever scored two touchdowns in one game as you look at Mike Tomzak who's replacing Jim McMahon who's out with a strained knee First down and 10, ball on the 20, Chicago. Right side, big hole. Anderson carries it out to the 27-yard line. One thing obvious about the game, the field position part of it has been tough because the Bears really have not had good field position with the exception of the first time they got, a, got it on the plus 24-yard line. It'll be second down and three. The ball on the 27. Mars comes to the bottom of the screen. Suey comes out of the game now. Musters in the backfield. Along with Anderson. This is Anderson to the left side. Down across the 30 to the 34-yard line. That'll be enough for a first down, I believe, for Chicago. Raymond Claiborne knocked him out. Coming up at halftime, Brent Irv and Dick Buckus with all the scores and highlights. And Dick visited New Orleans this week, Hank. Talked to the Saints' newest offensive weapon. Some say they're cocky, others say colorful. Craig Ironhead Hayward. 
He's like a runaway dump truck. Boy, he stings people when he hits them. Anderson now, 11 carries, 72 yards. First down at the 35. Tom Zach's first pass. Drilled across the middle, complete to Morris at the 42-yard line. Fine pass. You can't get better coverage than LePet had. But the ball was perfectly thrown, Hank. It was. It was right on the bit, uh, right on the right on the button. And unusually, you know, the, the uh, New England Patriots, they call their defensive package a nickel, but they play with six defensive backs, never with five. Unusual, they don't call it something other than well, a nickel. Well, they call it the dime defense, actually. Ernest Gibson and Rob McSwain come in. It's actually a 3-2-6. Second and three. Tom Zach, play action. Plenty of time. Throws this one to Anderson at the 49-yard line. First down, Chicago. Hank, one thing about the Bears, I can guarantee you they won't panic. No, they won't. They, you know, they, they know that they're just two, two plays from being back in the game. They've been in this position many, many times. They're a mature, strong football team, and they came in with the idea with a, of exercising a plan, and they're not going to panic and deviate from what they thought they could do coming into the ballgame. Had a quick look at the passing yards there. Flutie having a big day. McMahon out with a strained knee. Anderson and Musker, the setbacks now for Chicago on first down. Anderson. Not much there. Well, let me rephrase that. There was plenty there, but they were all red shirts. Here we see Tippett, number 56, going outside of the uh, offensive end. Comes across, comes across just a little bit too deep, but in spite of that, gets a piece of him, slows him down, and Brown is finally in a position, number 59, to clean up on the tackle. Second down and 10, the ball at the 49. And as the clock ticks down to the two-minute warning, there's timeout on the field. We'll take one as well. Continues to work on the game plan. He leads 20 to 7 with two minutes remaining in the first half. Both clubs have all their timeouts remaining. It's been an impressive offensive attack by New England. Three touchdown passes by Doug Flutie. That's been set up by the strong running... John Stevens. And they run the ball 21 times, Timmy, and uh, only passed three, uh, eight times, and three for touchdown. Here at second down and 10 at the 49 yard line for Chicago. Tom Zach, who's two for two, is going deep with this one. It's intended for Morris. Incomplete. Knocked away by Raymond Claiborne. <laughs> I think the feeling is that uh, it's hard to run right by Claiborne, but if you use a double move or a single move, you might be able to get by him. He tried to stutter and go by him that time, Morris, but in spite of that, Claiborne was right there and made a beautiful play defensively. It'll bring up third down and ten for the Bears. Chicago just one of four on third down conversions. Kozlowski comes to the bottom of the screen along with Morris. Twin receivers. Gentry's on the flank, on the wing. Shotgun formation. Six defensive backs now for New England. Again, they go down that left side to Morris. And again, Labor's there to break it up. Here we see the finish of it again. Look at him, and of course, Claiborne is be beyond Morris on the throw. It looked like he was a receiver instead of the defensive back. Almost had an interception. He's got two this year. Wagner on the punt for Chicago. Irving Fryer is standing at his own 15-yard line for New England. <laughs> Wagner's had two punts this afternoon. He's averaged 44 yards. This is a low snap. It's a tail wagger that'll take Fryer back to the eight-yard line, and he'll fair catch it there.
Top 20 foes, LSU and Alabama, both in the hunt for the SEC title, square off in one of the South's traditional battles. Southeastern Conference football at its finest, the Bengal Tigers against the Rolling Tide. For those of you in the Mountain Time Zone, you'll see undefeated and 10th ranked Wyoming taking on UTEP for supremacy in the WAC. All starting next Saturday at 2.30 Eastern Time, right here on CBS Sports. Hank, who do you like this year? Look at the unbeaten teams that remain now after UCLA fell by the wayside. Well, I think all those teams are excellent teams. I still feel that the University of Miami, Florida is the best team in college football. Straight ahead, Perryman. One minute, 30 seconds remain in the half. Richard Dent made the tackle. It'll bring up second down and eight. And Chicago wants a timeout. We'll take one as well. Stevens carries tackles across the 15 to the 16-yard line. Now Harris looked like he was in a back puddle pedal, and again, they stopped the clock with one minute and 20 seconds remaining in the half. So Chicago obviously wants that ball back. The other thing is very obvious as you watch this game. I did the game Monday night in Chicago, and the Bears were very emotionally involved in that game. They were flying all over the ball and all over the place. They don't, they're not playing with the same enthusiasm and the same uh, emotional level that they were Monday, and that's understandable. And I mentioned that at the beginning of the show, that if that isn't the same as it was Monday, why this could be a problem. Well, Hank, Neil Anderson was telling us that he's been tired in the latter part of the week, so if he is, and he's just a young guy, third-year pro, you know some of the older fellas have to be feeling a little bit in their legs. Good look at Mike Ditka and the CBS Sports Wires that keep you up to date on the scores around the National Football League. New England just two for seven on third down conversions. This one will be third and three in the 17. Perriman and Stevens, the setback. Morgan and Pryor, the wideouts. Stevens, he's not going to get there. So the Bears will get it back. Dan Hampton was there first. And now he's talking to Stevens. Stevens has a smile on his face, though. Look at, look at the face on, on Singletary. Look at those eyes. Again, look at him being in a position to make the play. Gets through the seam. Gets blocked again. But you see the intensity with which he plays. And he gets blocked. Somebody else is going to be free to make the tackle, which, ex which happened on the play. Chicago took its third timeout. Jeff Beagles will come on to punt for New England. And Wendell Davis, who has one fumble this afternoon, will be standing at his own 43-yard line. And Fiegel's uh, changed his kicking style. He used to kick uh, with his left foot forward and had a long stride. He now is kicking with his right foot forward, and uh, the shorter stride is permitted him to kick the ball much, much better. He has two punts this afternoon, both for 26 yards, but they were what he calls punt punts. Low snap. This one's a wobbler. Davis takes it across midfield. Ball's loose again. New England gets it. Marvin Allen makes the recovery. 42-yard punt, 13-yard return. And Allen gets the fumble. Here we see it. He makes the catch about number high where it should be. Makes the cut inside. Cuts again. The ball was hit. The ball was hit by the shoulder pad. Marvin Allen, number 39, winds up with a recovered fumble on the play. And Hank, we have to repeat that Dennis McKinnon's not in the ball game. And other than some preseason action in returns for Davis, he hasn't returned much since high school. That's right. In all fairness to him, that's right. Plenty of time remaining in the half. 103 for Doug Flutie. Flutie pumps and runs. 
to the 45-yard line. Good shot of the back of Doug Flutie. He's wearing larger shoulder pads than most quarterbacks in the NFL wear. As a matter of fact, they're offensive lineman pads for added protection. And I asked him, talking about bigness, I asked him why uh, he's wearing number two. He wore 22 in college. He's figured, well, I can't wear 22 here, so I decided to just take half of it and use number two. Same reason Stevens wears 44. Yeah, he, he had wore four in college and doubled that. Yeah. Second and one, Stevens bangs down the middle. Perryman correction to the 43-yard line. And it should be enough for the first down. Two pretty good battering rams. Stevens, 220 pounds. Perryman, 233. They move the chains. First down, New England. Under a minute now. 49 seconds remain in the half. It'll be first down, New England, at the 43-yard line. 20 to 7, Patriots. Full house, sold out Sullivan Stadium. Tim Brandt and Hank Stram. And Hank, I know you've got to be surprised. Yes, that's right, because, you know, coming into the game, I think everybody thought that it was going to be an overwhelming thing for the Chicago Bears. But again, as we talked to the players and talked to Flutie and talked to everybody, you had the feeling that they were going to play an extremely good game. And I think the key to the game, really, so far is the fact that they've had pretty good field position plus the fact that they've been able to control the line of scrimmage with the run. They've run twice as much as they passed, and it's been very effective. Three receivers left side for Flutie, throws the out pattern, intended for Cedric Jones incomplete. Well, they put Morgan, Cedric Jones, and Irving Fryer all to the same side. Cleared out with the two speedsters, brought Cedric Jones underneath incomplete. They've thrown to the corners, they've thrown outside. They haven't tried to throw any kind of a crossing pattern uh, so far in the game. It might be that that kind of a pattern would be effective and maybe get them close enough to kick a field goal. This is a team, New England, that's 26th in total offense. 21 rushing, 25th in passing, going against the number one defense in the NFL and doing it effectively. Dupart and Perriman now in the shotgun formation with Flutie. Second and ten. Good block by Perriman. Flutie throws this one to Stanley Morgan incomplete. And Morgan was wide open. Flutie's got an incredible feel for pressure. How he escapes and knows where everybody is like he does is really remarkable. And that's what makes him such a great player at the quarterback position here we see him again back in the pocket this time and then of course he gets in the outside of Harris and uh, you know when he escapes from the pocket he doesn't do it with the express purpose of trying to run he escapes from the pocket with the idea of trying to get the ball downfield with some kind of a pass Starofsky and Teddy Garcia number seven two field goal kickers on the active roster Garcia the long field goal kicker Third down and 10 for Flutie. Has this one up for grabs incomplete. Almost intercepted by Richard Dent and McMichael is the guy that got his hand on it. Here's the way it looks to Doug Flutie as he goes back into the pocket. And there's a hand go up. And it's direct. Reflect, uh, deflected and Richard Dent almost and he felt badly because he should have been able to make the interception McMichael number 76 made the block slapped it down well they'll blame that on his height he's only 5'10 of course we should mention Doug Williams who's well over 6'3 had three batted down in the Super Bowl this is Eagles punting away that's an excuse not a reason this one will hit inside the five go into the end zone for a touchback 43-yard punt, no return with 23 seconds remaining in the half. 20 to 7, New England. You know, it was interesting as we look at Tom Zach, listening to Raymond Barry talk about Doug Flutie, Hank. He says, you know, I think the little guy's more durable than perhaps the bigger guys. 
And the reason for that is, you know, you never get a good shot at him. Well, the Bear defense has knocked at least three quarterbacks out of games this year. Detroit's Chuck Long, Steve Pallor, Danny White of Dallas, and Jack Trudeau of the Colts. And the other thing that was uh, something for Raymond Berry to confess was that he thought that uh, of all the great players he has seen in his lifetime in professional football, was one of the great players was Doak Walker, and Flutie reminds him of Doak Walker. First down, Tom Zach has pressure, flags fly. This one's to Morris at the 30. To the 45, runs out of bounds and stops the clock with 12 seconds left in the half, but there is a flag. Gain of 25. And they'll nullify it, take it off the boards and bring it back, holding against Chicago. Holding, number 73 on the offense. Penalty accepted, 10 yards. First down. It's called on Wojciechowski. One of the replacement players who's stuck. He's now starting at that left tackle spot for Chicago. And he's playing with a bad knee, but he's sucking it up and playing and doing a good job in there. Sucking it up or sucking it out, as the case may be. He had his knee drained on Tuesday. First down and 20. out across the 20 to the 25 yard line and that should do it that's the end of the first half with the score the Patriots 20 the Chicago Bears 7 CBS Sports coverage of the National Football League is sponsored by new Extra Gold Draft in bottles and cans. The one with a full tilt taste. AT&T, the right choice. And by Subaru. We built our reputation by building a better car. Uh, welcome to New York, everybody. Dick Butkus is in shock as to what Bambi has done to the Chicago Bears. Carved them up so far. Four completions, three of them for touchdowns, a 20-7 to lead right now. I'll tell you, even Chicago fans had to applaud this first pass. Got a little sticky later, but they kind of like the little man putting it up, nerving prior, going 80 yards, and they botched the extra point, and Bear fans said, everything's okay, we got it under control. McMahon in, had the extra point, and up they go. And I'll tell you, maybe he is touched with magic, especially at Sullivan Stadium. He used to beat everybody there playing for BC. There's his second touchdown pass of the day and meanwhile his most severe critic Jim McMahon having a real tough time of it here he is going down unfortunately with a knee injury he's finished for the day and uh, some of the fans in New England enjoying it and Flutie went right back at it his third touchdown pass of the game and uh, Mr. Butkus what is going on in Foxborough? Well, I, Mike Ditka told me this week, he said, listen, when they play at home, they're tough. I mean, they beat Cincinnati and Buffalo. Come on, listen to me. I'm telling you, there's some important <laughs> facts here. And with Flutie, you got to contain them. They're not doing it this first half. There's, you know, the second half. Relax. Jeez, don't count them minutes. out. Yeah. Never heard any better alibi than that. <laughs> no, that's pretty I'll good. That. That's pretty good. <laughs> How about the Rams, and, uh, the Rams and New Orleans? Folks, so far, it has been a battle of the field goals. Craig Hayward has been shut down completely. He hasn't even gained 10 yards in the first half. Would have been 9 to nothing, except that that field goal was blocked right there by the Saints. But, you know, John Robinson, in watching what his Rams have accomplished this year, he has to be awfully pleased about the performance of his defense. You know what they call that defense, Brent? The Eagle defense. It's very effective. Really pick one off. But the Rams limited the Saints, who have a great running game, to just 19 yards rushing in the first half. You know, dynamite defense. Who that? Who that? Who that say they're going to beat them Saints? Who that? Huh? They love it down there. All right. The Philadelphia Eagles now. Uh, a short time ago, they went ahead of the uh, Atlanta Falcons. It was Byers. Remember the great career he had there at Ohio State? Then a stress fracture of his foot. Took a long time to heal. And uh, now suddenly uh, he's becoming a force for the Philadelphia Eagles over in the vet. And the Eagles lead their former coach 
Uh, Marion Campbell, 10 to 7 at the half. Phoenix and Dallas, uh, this is a real Samanex, folks. Scoreless. Cincinnati and Cleveland, this one a tough defensive game. And the Bengals have tied it up. It is 10-10 at the half there. Pittsburgh and the Jets, interesting that uh, the Jets never in their history have beaten the Steelers. A chance today, they're deadlocked. Green Bay and Buffalo, uh, Packers losing to a real good defensive team. Happy Halloween to all of you along the line. Murkowski, the Packer quarterback, is only one of nine, sacked three times. Riddick with the first touchdown, and the Bills add a second one. Uh, who knows? This team may wind up in Miami late in January. And finally, speaking of Miami, they can't score. Tampa Bay going without Vinny Testaverde. They can't either. We'll be back right after these. The New England Patriots lead 20-7 to over Chicago. This is the first New England game under new owner Victor Kayam who I talked with earlier this afternoon. Victor, congratulations on the purchase. And what is the attraction to football? As the temperature continues to drop, a little bit chilly, but now the sun shines in Sullivan Stadium. Let's take you back now and show you the very first play of this game, Hank Stram. Lightning struck on the very first play of the game, an 80-yard pass from Flutie to Fryer on, J on Jackson, number 24. Goes right by him, makes the catch, cuts back to the inside, back in the middle of the field, and goes all the way in for the touchdown on the very first play of this contest. 80 yards, longest touchdown pass of Flutie's career. Then they hit the tight end, Lynn Dawson. Watch Lynn Dawson, the left end, throwing inside of Dent. A great illustration of you don't throw over the top, you throw between, and that's exactly what happened. Now he throws another touchdown pass to the right, this time to Dawson, number 87, gets held up at the line of scrimmage, breaks free, pops wide open into the end zone for the touchdown. Garcia kicking off, and this will be taken by Gentry. Gentry has a hole straight up the middle, across midfield to the 40-yard line. And the Bears come out with lightning. Tackle made by Marvin Allen. Show you how that first half shaped up statistically, Hank. After that 51-yard return, and Tom Zach comes on. Look at this. Rushing yards, 113 to 96. Passing yards, look at that incredible. 18 yards, 120 for New England. Total offense, 216. But you have to remember the Bears had terrible, terrible field position throughout the first half. And the only time they had good field position, they scored. First down, Bears. Anderson has to tiptoe across the 40, then breaks the tackle to the 30. Four-yard line. Now, Hank, those rushing statistics impressive for New England in light of the fact that the last time these two teams played, New England crossed the 50-yard line only once. Watch tip at number 56. He's being blocked at the point of attack. Stays with the with the blocker. And then the, the back cuts in the inside. He comes back off the block and makes the tackle from the backside. Andre Tippett, second number 56. Down and, excuse me, Hank. Second down and four at the 34. Again, they go with Anderson. And this time, he's taken down quickly by Lawrence McGrew. McGrew, an eight-year veteran out of Southern Cal. 6'5", 233-pounder. Yeah, the amazing thing about this thing is that the Bears have not scored in the third quarter this year. That's amazing, isn't it? You're just joining us. We should tell you that Jim McMahon is out of the ball game with a strained knee. Mike Tomzak is the quarterback. Our ball number four there by Ditka, the third-team quarterback, now moves up to number two, and he's on the kickoff team. Third and three. Morris in motion. Tomzak looks down the right side incomplete. It was intended for the tight end, James Thornton. Roland James was the defensive back in that area. He was inactive last week with a groin injury. And they like Thornton very much. They say he's the strongest player on the team. Bench presses 550 pounds. That's about what you do, Tim, isn't it? Yeah, that's close. <laughs> I weigh about the same. <laughs> Fourth down and three, the Bears are going for it. Twin receivers, top of the screen. Four wideouts. Shotgun formation, they need three. Tomzak throws incomplete. 
intended for Gentry, who had come clean, wide open in the flat. They were in man-for-man -man coverage, everybody on the line of scrimmage, a perfect chance for a good play or a big play. Hank, how did he come that open with six defensive backs in the game? Yeah, that's a good question. I didn't see what happened in the flats there, but somebody must have blew the coverage. In the way Thompson looks at it, here's a blitz. Roland James coming in on the inside. The inside man, from a defensive standpoint, was supposed to cover. A reaction of Mike Ditka. He's not upset, is he? Looks like you on the sidelines. <laughs> What's the hold up here, Hank? I didn't see what happened, very frankly. There aren't any flags. Gordon McCarter is going over, and he'll speak with a red hat on the field, the man who stops and starts this game when timeouts need to be taken. Mike Ditka had a nice visit with him yesterday in his seventh season as head coach. Regular season record of 68 wins and just 28 losses. Bears are 7-1 and one in the midst of a five-game win streak. 11-4 last year, but right now in some trouble trailing 20-7. I liked his answer yesterday. Somebody asked him whether he feels good, but what he feels good about his team, what particular part of it. Is he satisfied with? He said nothing. We won a game last week. We got to win this week again, and that's true. First down, New England at the 34. High formation. Across the 35 to the 36-yard line goes John Stevens. Hampton and McMichael double team him there. You know, Steve McMichael, who was in on that tackle, was New England's third-round draft pick in 1980 and was cut in camp in 1981. Now look at him, a nine-year veteran out of Texas. And he leads the Bears in sacks. Hunts rattlesnakes in Texas, Hank. He can do that without me. I hope he never invites me on that trip. Second and eight from the 36. Almost immediately drags the tackler back to the line of scrimmage. That was Richard Dent. And Perryman was trying to block him on the play and missed the block on Dent, and that's why he was able to come through there and make the tackle. New England continues to run and try to run. Stevens now over 80 yards for this game. This is a New England team that was able to run for only 34 combined yards against New England, against Chicago in the last two times they met. Five down linemen, five defensive backs now for Chicago. Shotgun formation for New England on third and seven. Flutie's pass incomplete. Intended for Reggie Dupard. You know, the other thing about Flutie, he gets back in the pocket very quickly, and then the other thing, he gets rid of the ball quick. He gets rid of the ball very fast. You're Doug Flutie here now. Look at Hampton, but see that you don't throw over the top of people, you throw between people. There was another great illustration of him getting rid of the ball between Hampton on the play. Doug Flutie has now missed five passes in a row as you look at Jeff Beagles. And Wendell Davis is deep for Chicago. He has two fumbles this afternoon. This is a high spiraling punt. It'll take Davis inside the 15 to the 10 where he'll fair catch it. 53 yard punt. No return. We'll be back. About some of the comments McMahon made about Floyd, but Ditka has defended him. I know one thing, you know, when it comes down to competing, nobody competes any harder than Doug Flutie. You can make what you want to make of anything, but he, if uh, competition is anything to do it, he's going to go out and do the best he can. Yeah, it might be more incentive for him than it is for us. And a look at Doug Flutie. Three touchdown passes this afternoon from the graduate of Boston College. Third time the Bears have started inside their 20. First down, the ball at the 10. Tom Zach, play action, rolls right. Muster has a Bears first down. And 
Hank, we haven't seen Matt Suey in the second half at all. I think something happened probably during the course of the game where maybe the coach has just decided. I, I don't think he's hurt. I think they just made a decision to go with Brad Muster, and he made a good catch there on a play-action pass, number 25. Muster carried the ball only five times Monday night for 10 yards. 23 carries on the year, but you know, while he was at Stanford, he ran for almost 3,000 yards and 27 touchdowns. First down, ball at the 22-yard line. I think they're going to get a new ball. The stuffing's coming out of that one. They are stuffed, aren't they? I wonder what, yeah, <laughs> the way they're playing, they're not throwing it, so they must have stuffed some sand in it, and they're playing with the ball was full of sand. Like a medicine ball. That's right. Hilgenberg said, get it out of here. Too much pine tar on it. Kozlowski in motion. This is Neil Anderson on first down. Good pursuit by the Patriots. Vincent Brown will be credited with the tackle along with Hodge. And Claiborne did a good job of coming up and making the play go inside where he got the help from the inside people. It'll be second down and seven at the 25-yard line. 11 minutes exactly in the third quarter. Anderson, 15 carries, 81 yards. Good looking. Claiborne on second and seven. Flags fly as Anderson follows Buster around the corner. Looked like that was on the Bears. Looked like somebody was moving on the inside. Couldn't tell for sure. It looked like it was on the Bears. Still came about four yards short of a first down. Gordon McCarter says it is against Chicago. And Tippett says we'll take it. Illegal motion, number eight in the offense. Friendly accepted, repeat second down. That's Thornton. Watch Thornton, there it is, tight end. Try to get a jump on his block on Williams. Offside on the play. Four Chicago penalties now for 25 yards. Second down and 12, ball at the 20. Kozlowski comes to the bottom of the screen. Davis at the top. Tom Zach tries to set up the screen to Anderson. It does. Gets a block. To the 45-yard line. Neil Anderson finally knocked out by Ronnie LePet. And Mark Bortz, number 62, made a great block on the outside. They provided running room on the inside for that big game. Mark Bortz, number 62. Terrific block. Gain of 26. First down, Bears. <laughs> Word is now off the Chicago bench that Matsui has a bruised thigh. Could return. We'll have to wait and see. Buster and Anderson are the setbacks. Kozlowski and Davis the splits. Tom Zach the throw on the first down. Backside pressure. Buster into New England territory. Out of bounds at the 41-yard line, marking the 36. Vincent Brown gets the tackle, gain of 19. Boy, Lawrence McGrew almost had the sack. Good composure by that guy, Tom Zach. Tim Brandt, Hank Stram with you in Sullivan Stadium. Temperature was 46 degrees at kickoff time. It's been dropping throughout the game. It's in the low 40s now. They're calling possibly for snow flurries tonight. And Hank Stram's braving it. Hadn't put on his top coat yet. He does not. All that hot air going on in here keeps me warm. <laughs> First down, Tom Zach. Throws this one back all the way to Boston, incomplete. Right now, let's go to New York. Here's Brent Musburger. Brent? Well, Tim, Chris Miller again for the Atlanta Falcons firing things up. Here is his second touchdown pass of the game now to wide open Floyd Dixon. And the Falcons have gone back ahead. Go back to Tim and Hank. All right, Brent, while you were gone, Mike Ditka 
Got a little bit fired up on the sidelines. Tomzak now 5 of 10 for 70 yards. Harbaugh comes into the ball game. That's how fired up he was. So a change of quarterbacks in second and 10. Pick up a, a couple by Anderson, but how about that, Hank? Now here's here's what look at look at Mike Ditka. And anyway, that was that's what caused the the change. And uh, he got Tom Sack out of there and put Harbaugh right in the game. Well, he's saying that Harbaugh had some wide open receivers and was overthrowing them. And Tom Zach's fired up now. Nine minutes, ten seconds remain in the third quarter. 27 New England. Third and eight for Harbaugh. Broken up by Roland James. You talk about a team team playing an emotional game New England is here we see it from this angle defensive standpoint Remember coming in there on a blitz 52 and Roland James getting a good jump anticipation and knocks the ball loose Tom Zach comes back in Ditka was looking for a substitution both tight ends came running up to him and he said no I want Tom Zach on fourth down and eight shotgun four wide receivers Kozlowski wide open and overthrown by Tom Zach. We'll be back. Tim Brandon and Hank Stram with you from Sullivan Stadium. And it's been all New England since the first play of this game, Hank. Hasn't changed. The tempo hasn't changed at all since the very first play of the game. And uh, it, it doesn't look like it's going to change here the way they're playing right now. First play, 80-yard touchdown, Flutie to Fryer. This being first down. Again, Flutie goes defense to Fryer. Into Chicago territory. David Tate makes the tackle, but what a catch by Irving Fryer. His third catch of the afternoon. What a day he's having, Hank. Watch, here's the first play of the game. Here you see Pryor making a move inside, going down the sideline. Jackson, number 24, can't make the plays way behind him. Cuts back into the inside, goes into the end zone for the touchdown. Pryor, the Patriots' leading receiver with 24 catches and four touchdowns in this year. First down at the 47. Flutie rolls right. Incomplete intended for Morgan. Coming up next, the second game of our NFL doubleheader. Most of you will see Minnesota at San Francisco, while others will see the New York Giants against Detroit. The story in San Francisco is Young will start, and Montana has been deactivated. Any feelings on that, Hank? Well, I think they're very concerned about his physical condition. They don't want to take a chance with him. I think immediately people think he's going to be near the end of the road. I don't think that's the case. I think they just want to make sure he's not hurt more than people think he is. Second and ten for New England, Stevens. Taken down by Hampton. It'll bring up third and about seven. You know what we just saw in that last play was interesting because... We talked about early about the fact that the New England Patriots had to run the ball. And when you run the ball efficiently with a quarterback like Flutie, it sets up the play action and the scrambles and the movement. And the last play was a great illustration of that. He got outside of everybody and was in a great position to throw a completed forward pass, but it was dropped and thrown a little bit better. Patriots go to four wide receivers, shotgun formation. The Bears come with their five defensive backs on third and seven for Flutie. Complete. It was intended for Lynn Dawson. But good coverage by the Chicago Bears. And Flutie said about rollouts, and most people think that he should roll out most of the time. He said, when I roll out, I'm restricted and that I just have a half of the field to throw to. 
Whereas when I'm in the pocket, I have any way I want to to scramble and move and then throw the football. I like the pocket much, much better than I do movement by design. Beagles averaging 38 yards today, and Wendell Davis, well, it's been a rough afternoon. The ball in Chicago territory, Beagles again will go to what he calls his punt punt, put it high and try to down it inside the 10. This one hits at the 7, and it'll be down there. Marvin Allen, 37-yard punt, and again, no return. So face Wyoming next Saturday on CBS Sports. New England continues to lead Chicago. The last time these two teams met, 1986, Super Bowl 20. The Bears won that one 46 to 10, but look at this, Hank. A lot of changes. Yeah, a lot more than people realize. The two constants in the two team and the Bears since that time is the fact they still have the same quarterback, and they're still the number one defensive team in the National Football League. Well, they did have the same quarterback. McMahon's out of the game, didn't return in the second half. He's got a strained knee. Tom zach has been playing most of the way. He's in there now, but Harbaugh also came into the ball game. Anderson on the carry there. It'll be second down and about four for Chicago. Backed up deep in their own territory. One of the frustra most frustrating things uh, to a coach in a game like this one is the fact that the Bears, from the Bears' standpoint, they have had terrible, terrible field position most of the time, and a couple of times they've had good field position, they weren't able to take advantage of it. Ball on the 15, high formation. Morris in motion on second and four. Flags fly everywhere. That's Tom Thayer, four-year pro out of Notre Dame, 57. Thayer's playing with a strained knee as you look at Ditka sending in his tight end, James Thornton. They bring out Emory Moorhead. Thornton brings the play in. Bears now five penalties for 30 yards. Six minutes, 20 seconds remain. In this quarter, second down at nine. The ball at the ten. Tomzak. Incomplete. It was intended for Buster, but a fine defensive play by Raymond Claiborne. Right now, let's go to New York. Here's Brent Musburger. Brent? Hey, Tim, we've got a couple of updates for you. This is the uh, Dallas Cowboy touchdown pass here. Pelur drops it up as they were blitzing, and Ray Alexander takes it in. It's a 50-yard pass, catch, run, 10-0 Cowboys. Browns block a punt. They lead the Bengals by 10. They had to have it 20-10. to 10. Back to 10. That win, too, Brent. Bears now one of seven on third down conversions today. Have not been successful here. It's third down and nine, and the ball's still at the ten. Four wide receivers, Chicago. Kozlowski in motion. New England counters with six defensive backs. Tomzak throws. Incomplete. Rod McSwain was the defensive back. Pushing Wendell Davis out of bounds, but the ball was overthrown nonetheless. Watch, watch Brent Williams, 96, trying to get penetration, spins away from one, gets hit again, trying to get to the quarterback, and then he gets decked right at the end of the rush. Should have brought his lunch pail. <laughs> He really got a shot. Wagner, five yards deep in his own end zone, will punt this one away. Fryer standing at the 45. Pressure. And a wobbly kick will bounce across midfield and go out of bounds at the 49. A lot of pressure coming from New England that time with the punt block on. 41-yard punt, no return. 5.48 remaining third period. leading Chicago 20 to 7 with 548 remaining in the third quarter this is the way it looks in the Central Division Chicago at 7 and 1 and needs this win badly to keep 
that two-game lead on Minnesota. Don't forget San Francisco and Minnesota play next. So that game becomes even that much more important. First down and 10, the ball on the 49. New England continues to run. This time it's Perriman. Picks up about four, maybe five. Hank, New England has been three plays in punt on the last four possessions. But the only thing that's important is they're still winning the game 20-7. to seven. That's, that's the big thing. You saw the games that were coming up next on doubleheader Sunday, and that Minnesota-San Francisco game is going to be a, a good one. Two tight ends, Dawson and Francis now for New England. One wide receiver. Second down and four. Stevens gets to the outside for a block, and he's going to be close to a first down. Dave Dewars had made the tackle. Mike Ditka came off the sidelines and wanted a penalty. I think right now he's looking for any kind of help he can get. I tell you, the Bears have to make something happen with their defense, and they have to make something with their specialty teams that get back in this game their field position has been just terrible and they have to do something in those two categories to get back in this contest I think why is so upset Hank is that they've been making mental errors they've been putting the ball on the ground they've been overthrowing open receivers and you know that's unlike the Chicago Bears first down at the 40 again two tight ends in the backfield the setbacks are Perryman and Stevens this is Perryman down to the 36-yard line. Four minutes and 11 seconds remain third quarter, and now New England's just melting the clock. Farrell, number 62, and Dent. We'll see them in a minute. Get involved. There it is. Farrell gives him a little shot from the backside, gives him a little push, Dent backs away. Nothing happens. One of those boys will be boys, thanks. You better say men if they're any closer. Second down and six of the 36. Big hole for Stevens down to the 25-yard line. David Tate trips him up. Keep in mind, David Tate is the player that Chicago got from the draft pick in the Doug Flutie deal. Get a good push here, and watch Singletary. He has a shot, but misses the tackle. Watch the handoff, and here they're running straight at him. Singletary has a shot, but he runs right through his arm. He wasn't close enough to put the squeeze on him. Goes right through his arms and picks up the necessary yardage for the first down. on the wing high formation on first down at the 25 Stevens inside the 25 to the 23 yard line Rivera checks him up there Stevens now 26 carries over 100 yards and that's two weeks in a row that he's done that and prior to last week New England hadn't had a runner go over 100 yards since 1985 The offensive line is getting a good push. They're getting off the ball good, creating some scenes for the running backs to pick their way in mid-yardage. That's Via, Farrell, Babb, Wooten, and Armstrong, the front five. Second and nine at the 24 for the Patriots. Perryman down to the 20-yard line, but there are flags. And the penalty will be against Chicago. Number one defense in the NFL. Offside, number 59 defense, five yard penalty, repeat second down. Yeah, you can't throw the clipping on the field and say we're number one and not play like you're supposed to play and still not get pushed around. This is what's happened in this afternoon. New England has just beaten them to the punch up front and controlling the line of scrimmage. 
Hank, this is the first time a runner's gone over 100 yards in 30 games against this defense. It'll be second and four at the 19. one coverage and they have that they're not going to take advantage of it stevens tries to get the corner doesn't get there then tries to stay in bounds and doesn't so the clock stops with 119 remaining third period richard dent made the tackle top 20 foes lsu and alabama both in the hunt for the sec title square off in one of the south's traditional battles or you'll see UTEP against Wyoming, and Wyoming's awfully strong, unbeaten. These are the only unbeaten teams remaining now. Wyoming, Notre Dame, West Virginia yesterday with Major Harris. How'd you like him, Hank? Oh, he's terrific, and he's only a sophomore. Really looks strong. Beating up on Penn State, Arkansas, and Southern Cal. Third and two for the Patriots. intercepted by Mike Richardson that was not a well-thrown ball Fryer had broken open he was wide open and he just underthrew the ball here's the play action fake there's the rush on the outside has plenty of time to throw the ball jumps up in the air now here's the rest of it. Here's Fryer breaking to the inside. Runs right by Richardson. Has to wait for the ball. Thrown poorly. It should have really been intercepted by Richardson on the play. 35-yard field goal attempt by Jason Starowski. And it's good. Violinists pumped it right through there, didn't he? Starowski. They just signed him. Teddy Garcia was having problems more mental than anything because they know Garcia has a strong leg and they've kept him activated. But they brought in Starowski anyway. And that's his first field goal as a New England Patriot, and it's 23 to 7. That's an important field goal. It puts him more than two touchdowns ahead, that's gets right. him off that odd number. And especially at this stage of the game, with the Bears struggling like they, they have been, any kind of points are very important points. I can tell you this, coach. If you had to hit Irving Fryer in that end zone for a touchdown, the Bears would have been in serious trouble. Still plenty of time, though, for Chicago with 108 remaining third period. They have to make something happen. They just have to get a good kick return. They've got to do something. They haven't been in, out, of the, out of the soup almost all afternoon. Well, Hank, the record is intact. Chicago still has not scored in the third period this year. At least not yet with 108 remaining in this period. This is Gentry. And again, he's got a big hole. And then he's nailed at the 34. Good, strong hit. Made by Sammy Martin. And he got help from Daryl Holmes. 21-yard gain. Watch Daryl Holmes, number 41. Sprinting down to cover the kick. And two guys in the same lane. Yeah, they're a little close. They shouldn't be, they should be farther apart, but he finally gets a bead on the ball carrier and is there to make, help make the tackle. First down, Chicago at the 33. Harbaugh is the quarterback. And he overthrows Kozlowski. So since McMahon has gone out with a strained knee, both quarterbacks that play behind him have struggled. And, and, Chicago in the second half. Now look at this. Lost it on downs, punted three times. Or after three plays, rather. Second down and 10 at the 33. Harbaugh feels the backside pressure. Now goes to the sideline. 
And is run out at the 37 by Lawrence McGrew. Jim Harbaugh, second year pro out of Michigan, 6'3", 204 pounder. Raised in a locker room, his dad's a football coach. Where, Hank, Western Michigan? Yes. Used to coach with Bo Schembechler at the University of Michigan. You know, the Bears just look like they're out of sync here this afternoon. They, they can't get anything going. Of course, we keep talking about field position, but they just haven't been able to do anything at all, and the quarterbacks have missed their last six passes. His dad now, after being with Bo Schembechler and coaching at Western Michigan, has moved over to Pittsburgh. Chicago takes a timeout with 44 seconds remaining in the third quarter. Third down and five. Harbaugh wants to make sure. Talking about Mike Dit Ditka, and there's a good picture of him yesterday. He was concerned, very concerned about this game, especially so because they played Monday night, and then uh, you know they had to they had to go right back to practice like it was a normal week on Wednesday. The players were a little tired, and uh, they're playing a little bit like they are here this afternoon. Was that a smart timeout by the young quarterback? Obviously, Mike didn't think so. Four wide receivers now for Chicago. Six defensive backs for New England. Third and five. The pressure comes both ways, and it's incomplete. In the area of Dennis Gentry, but you see Roland James was all over it. You know, it's, a, it's amazing, Tim, when you see these teams in the week in and week out of the National Football League, how important the urgency factor really is. Because the Bears, even if they lose, they're still in first place. This team is fighting for their life to get back in the race. So the urgency is in favor of the New England Patriots, especially after the Monday night game. And uh, it makes a big difference sometimes. Irving Fryer standing on his own 25. Low snap, almost blocked. Boy, he booms this kick, too. It'll take Fryer back to the 10. Fryer wisely runs out at the 21-yard line. There was absolutely no wall set up. They had the punt block on, so it was a 51-yard punt and a 10-yard return. Doug Flutie has never lost in Sullivan Stadium, and so far in this game, that magic has continued. First down and 10, the ball at the 21. The crowd just loves him, Hank, here in New England. Oh, they're reading it up, and I just saw Billy Sullivan, and he was all smiles. Oh! He, he, it looked like he was playing them. one of those moth organs, you know. He was all, all teeth. Flutie yeah. and the Pats. One of the newspapers up here called him the Pathetics. Not this afternoon. Perryman in motion, Stevens the carrier. He gets back to the line of scrimmage, and Hampton made him pay for that. You know, Flutie has thrown three touchdown passes. He's only thrown 17 in the game so far, completed only five, and uh, has only completed one out of five in the second half. That'll be the last play of the third quarter. It is intact. The Bears haven't scored in this quarter the entire season. Well, that's the end of the third quarter with the score. 23 to 7 New England. We now pause for a word from your local station. Quarter trend import car of the year. Second down and nine as we start the final 15 minutes. The Patriots lead the Bears 23 to 7. Straight ahead as New England continues to run against the number one defense in the league. Last New England back to have two 100-yard games in a row. Sam Cunningham back in 1977. John Stevens has done it here with New England. 
delightful guy, too, and we talked to him yesterday, and uh, it's the only time, I think, in all the years I've been in broadcasting that after we interviewed a player, after we got through, he said, thank you very much for, for talking to me. <laughs> that was a surprise. After we both fell off the chair and came back on while we were back in business. That's right. Third down and three, the ball on the 28. They go with the big back across the 30. He'll be close to the first down. Robert Perryman, and they complement each other so well, Perryman and Stevens. Tackle made by McMichael. Of course, Perryman's carrying his load as well, but getting back to Stevens, I thought it was funny when Stevens told us that he'd always looked up to Eric Dickerson, and all of a sudden they were playing the Colts. He was on the same field, and he was cheering for Dickerson. <laughs> and the coaches came over and said, hey, look, you can't cheer for him anymore. You're playing against him. Yeah, that was cute, wasn't it? They'll bring the chains out on this one. The scoreboard has already turned it to first down. And as they stretch the chains, you can see that they've made it by half the football. Doug Flutie, 5 of 17, 139 yards and three touchdowns. And he set the tempo for this one early. An 80-yard touchdown pass to Fryer on the very first play of scrimmage. 13 minutes, 45 seconds remain in the game. First down, the ball on the 31 for the Patriots. Dawson and Francis, two tight ends. They give us to Stevens. Stevens gains maybe a yard. Dave Dorson made the tackle. Perryman that time came in on McMichael, number 76, very aggressively, and got a good shot at him. Didn't knock him down, but, got, but uh, did get into him very well. Bears have been mixing and disguising defenses better than in years past, and not blitzing as much, and Raymond Berry was said, well, how come they don't blitz as much? And Berry answered, well, they get a seven-man rush out of the four men they have there. <laughs> you know, and, and of course, uh, when you're not used to playing against the run, you know, you're doing so good. All the coverages don't make any difference because you have to still play football, stop the run when they're running efficiently. Second and eight straight ahead. Big hole left side up to the 40-yard line. Mike Singletary makes the tackle on Stevens. Tim Branton, Hank Stram with you. Sullivan Stadium in Foxborough, Massachusetts. And it is a sumptuous autumnal afternoon. Sullivan Stadium sold out this afternoon. This club changed hands Friday. New owner, Victor Kayam, Fran Murray. And I'm very happy to see Billy Sullivan and his son Pat stay with the franchise. They've been here from the very beginning and have made a great contribution to professional football in this area. Third down and one, Stevens, right side, first down, New England. Stevens now 31 carries, 114 yards. And Farrell that time got a good block. Good block and permitted him to get into that seam and pick up some extra yardage on the play. Watch the stunt with Hampton. Going to the outside, trying to get through all the bodies. Gets an arm on him, but not enough. And Singletary finally makes the tackle, along with Rivera, number 59. First down at the 43. 11 minutes, 13 seconds remain. And Doug Flutie. Osi Tatupu out across the 45 to the 46-yard line. And, Hank, we have to give credit to the offensive front of New England. Via, Farrell, Babb, Wooten, and Armstrong have played strongly all afternoon. Babb obtained in September from Cleveland. And here's a good shot of that offensive line trying to block Hampton that time, a miss that time and Hampton reacts and makes the play. Mosey Tatupu had one carry for one yard last week, and that's what he has this afternoon. Second down and eight. Tatupu picks up a couple more, 
Dan Hampton makes the tackle. You know, Raymond Berry does a lot of unusual things with his football team to illustrate this point, why they, uh, in 1985, he had a meeting with the quarterbacks and said, listen, we want you, I want you to make the signals for the game, and then you make them, tell them what they are, and then the coaches will learn them. And uh, Grogan calls the plays for New England. Uh, Eason sends in the plays to the quarterback on the field, and he thinks that's very efficient because all three quarterbacks are in the game in, with regard to one phase or the other, and it's been very effective. But Thank it's an unusual way to do it. Who would have ever thought as we came into this game that New England at this point would have 43 runs and only 17 passes. Third down and six for Flutie. Flags fly. Flutie scrambles, gets out of bounds, and he's hit hard on the sideline. And again, a flag is going to be thrown over there for unnecessary roughness. Cedric Jones was the receiver. I want to see if Flutie gets up. He is. He's up and he's all right. He bounced right up like a ball. Of course, he does. I don't think he knows where he is, but he bounced back up. <laughs> <laughs> it's those big shoulder pads he wears. Yeah. That's the first time I've ever seen anybody get a good shot at him, and that was out of bounds. Doug Flutie showed up here yesterday at the facility at 8.30, and he didn't leave until after 3. He put in a full day watching films, talking with the coaches, going over the game plan. But he was well prepared, and of course when he said, we talked about the five-man line, and he said, well, we were looking at that just a little while ago because we looked at last year's Washington game. Number 80 on the offense. This is number 90 on the defense against the quarterback. This is what we call the 515 rule. The major penalty is enforced from the previous spot. It will be 15 yards and first down. How about that Gordon McCarter? He's taking us to school. Well done. What he was saying is Irving Fryer, illegal motion. But then Al Harris, number 90, hit Doug Flutie illegally. Here it is. Actually, he was in bounds when he hit him. Yeah, he pushed him. Got to push him, try to push him out of bounds. He didn't hit him nearly as bad as I thought he did when I first saw the picture. Nor did I, and of course, the officials are flag happy when it comes to protecting that quarterback, and rightfully so. So many have been hurt this year. Does that play look legal? Seventh penalty, nonetheless, for 50 yards against Chicago. Seven remaining in this ball game. Perriman and Stevens are the setbacks. Two tight ends for New England. First down. Stevens down to the 32-yard line. Here we see Mike Singletary, number 50, comes in. You see, and, and tries to make the tackle, has a bad angle, got too much penetration, tried to reach back and make the play, ran right through his arms, and picked up a nice gain on the play. This is the second time that the Patriots have played a team coming off Monday night. Played well against the Bills and lost that one. And they're winning this one against the Bears, 23-7. And they beat Cincinnati early in the season. Second down and four. Perriman bounces outside to the 29-yard line. Mike Singletary does make that tackle. Don't forget, coming up next, the second game of our NFL doubleheader. Most of you will see the Minnesota Vikings against the San Francisco 49ers, and that game now carries some major importance in the NFC Central. And others will see the New York Giants at Detroit. Dennis McKinnon is not in this game for Chicago, but he was asked about the race. And he said, there is no race with Minnesota. As long as we keep winning, the race is over. Right now, the Bears trail 23-7. Third and one. Stevens. It'll be close. Great defensive pursuit by Hampton and Singletary. Yeah, they got over there in a big hurry. Look at this, the Rams 12, New Orleans 10.
It'll bring up fourth down. Fangio will go for it, and that's what they're going to do. Fourth down and one. The ball at the 29. 7-15 remaining in the ball game. New England two for two this afternoon on fourth down conversions. They load up again with the power formation. Two tight ends, Perriman and Stevens. Right side, Stevens has the first. And Bruce Armstrong, the right tackle, got a good block on Harris, number 90. Hank, it doesn't look like a 3-5 and five ball club, although they are 3-1 and one at Sullivan Stadium. Well, the mentality, you know, you play the number one team in a, in a division, and the motivation is all in favor of the team, the underdog, and they... They played a terrifically outstanding football game here this afternoon so far. Stevens, 34 carries, 123 yards now. Irving Fryer comes to the left side of the formation. Tupu and Perryman in the backfield. Richard Dent gets a pretty good lick on him. Bill Breslin, our spotter, so astutely just said they're running the clock out. It's <laughs> a great observation. Thanks a lot, Bill. <laughs> yeah, they stuck an ice pick in the ball, let the air out of it. They're not going to throw it. They're going to just keep running it. Billy Breslin does a great job, along with Chuck Gardner, our statistician. 13th play of this drive. All 12 have been runs. Five minutes and 30 seconds remain now. Tutupu stays in the ball game, this time with Stevens. Stevens down to the 26-yard line, and he's lassoed there by Richard Dent. Dent came from the backside, was in, was in good pursuit, took a good pursuit angle, and lassoed him from right around the neck. It'll be third down and nine. Reggie Dupart comes into the ball game along with Stanley Morgan and Irvin Fryer. As much as they've run that play, it looks like he can make the play and not tell anybody else and keep the ball and go back away from the flow and pick up good yardage on a play. Talking about Flutie. The two point Dupart are the setbacks. Third and nine. Flutie going long. Touchdown, New England. Stanley Morgan. Who they threw it on, Tim? Besty Jackson. Besty Jackson. Hank, there's only 4:37 remaining in the ball game, and Chicago has not had the ball in this quarter. <laughs> Tempo in the first play of the game. 80-yard touchdown pass, Flutie to Fryer. Jim McMahon went out with a strained knee in the first half. He hasn't re returned, and Flutie, four touchdown passes now. And how about Stevens, the running back, 124 yards. Well, he set up the whole thing, I think, really. The way they've run the ball, that offensive line did a terrific job of controlling the line of scrimmage, which permitted him to throw very efficiently when they had to and when they wanted to. The last, here's a here's the first play of the game. This is the way it started. Fryer going up on top, licking Besty Jackson, number 24. That's the way it started, and it really never changed from the very first play of the game. Then, as you look at the completion of the run, I'll tell you the last drive, the last touchdown, went 79 yards, 14 plays. It took 10 minutes and 54 seconds. And the Bears are about to have it for the first time this quarter. This is Gentry. He's had some good returns this afternoon. This one to the 31-yard line. 
This was a 26-yard return stopped by Thomas Benson. Harbaugh comes back on. All three quarterbacks for Chicago have played this afternoon. And it's not quite the same team without Jim McMahon. That's no secret. We'll be back. Sellout crowd enjoying this on a lovely afternoon in New England. The Bears aren't liking it. That's not going to bode well for Tampa Bay next week in Chicago. That's where we'll be, Hank. First down, the ball on the 32. Two wide receivers, bottom of the screen. This pass is intended for Gentry incomplete and not well thrown. Here's the last touchdown for the Patriots. Morgan, number 86. Look at the room. He's got the throw right down the middle. Vesty Jackson leaps high for the ball. It goes right over the top. And Morgan makes the touchdown. Back to three bear quarterbacks now. Seven for 23. 74 yards, one interception. Second down and 10 for Harbaugh. Backside pressure. Steps up in the pocket and drills this one. Almost intercepted. Outstanding coverage by Fred Marion. This team consistently has, a, has had a difficult time winning without McMahon at quarterback, as everybody knows, and it's been very obvious here today, although they just have been out of sync. They just have not done a good job here this afternoon. That's the only thing you can say about the way they play. Of course, McMahon, 59 starts, 45 wins, but in his career he's had shoulder injuries, neck injuries, back, kidney, hand, hamstring, and today it's a strained knee. Well, the Rams beat New Orleans 12 to 10. That's final. Two down linemen, three linebackers, six defensive backs. On third down and ten, four wide receivers for Chicago. Shotgun formation, Gentry in motion. Get inside to Anderson, and he may have lost a yard. Benson and Tippett were there first along with Brett Williams. And there's the new owner who is 1-0, oh, Victor Cayenne. Billy Sullivan right next to him. He's all smiles. Victor Kayam had a leverage buyout on Remington Products, turned that company into a winner. Financially solid. And he predicts he'll do the same here. He raises the hand of Billy Sullivan. Ryan Wagner on to punt for Chicago with three minutes and 30 seconds remaining in the ball game. No return man. It'll bounce and it'll go through to the end zone for a touchback. Chicago can't do much right today at all. 70-yard punt, but they'll bring it all the way out to the 20. On CBS, now some of you will see the Giants take on the Lions. The rest of you are going to be watching the Vikes and the 49ers in a rematch of last year's divisional playoff game, which was won by Jerry Burns' Wild Card Wonders. At the helm again for the Vikes, Wade Wilson, last Sunday's NFL Offensive Player of the Week. His counterpart will be Steve Young, San Francisco's scrambling quarterback. He'll be looking for help from Roger Craig. That's coming up later. Right now, let's send you back to the game you're enjoying. It started the very first play of the game. Flutie to Fryer, 80 yards, made it 6-0. After a New England turnover, McMahon scored. It was 7-6 Chicago, but after that, Flutie hit the tight end. Two touchdown passes. Lynn Dawson, his first one, was his first touchdown catch since 1984. That made it 13-7 New England. His second touchdown was the first time he's ever done that in his career. Then McMahon strained his knee. Bears, no sacks in the ball game, and it's been all New England since that point. Straight ahead, they get about four. So four touchdown passes now for Doug Flutie. And the clock continues to roll. So that's the story from Sullivan Stadium in Foxborough, Massachusetts. New England 30, Chicago 7. Four touchdown passes for Doug Flutie. So with three minutes exactly in this ball game, it's still all New England. Second down and six, the ball on the 24. Dawson and Francis.
has his two tight ends. The lone setback, Mosi Tatupu. Allen goes to the wing. Allen has the first down for Chicago, or for New England, rather, out to the 34-yard line. Hey, Hank, I want to tell you something. You get an A++ on your game plan. Well, this is what we said before the game. Must run at the Bears' defense straight at him, which they did for 169 yards rushing. They must make big plays when they have the opportunity against man for man. They ran 80 yards in the first play of the game and must not have a turnover, but the way the game has gone, the turnover did wasn't the factor. Big plays, five passes over 15 yards. Yeah, they were right on it. And a two-minute warning with the Patriots leading 30-7. to seven. Proud new owner of this New England Patriots ball club. And under his tutelage, they're now 1-0, and or under his ownership. Great way to start, isn't it? Of course, he's the man that made Remington products so successful. And he's already handed out his first bonuses, Hank. He went into the locker room and gave each player a shaver. He did? Well, that was the other day. Oh, I didn't know that. Where's, uh, how come we didn't get one? That's a good question. He was up in the booth. I asked him for some shaving cream. He says, we don't sell razors. <laughs> Time of possession. The second half has certainly been impressive. Allen gets the carry. Under one minute and 50 seconds now. 30 to 7 is our score. It'll, don't forget next Saturday CBS Sports coverage continues of college football in the Southeastern Conference LSU the Bengal Tigers against the rolling tide of Alabama or some of you will see the University of Texas El Paso going against unbeaten Wyoming and these are the undefeated teams remaining now in college football Wyoming unbeaten Notre Dame of course could move up to number one with UCLA losing although Southern Cal will have something to say about that and so will West Virginia West Virginia Really beat up big on Penn State yesterday. I really didn't realize they were that good. You kind of gave me an indication of that last week, but I didn't know much about their team. And boy, they really put a number on Penn State this weekend. Hank, I'll make a prediction right now that if he doesn't get hurt, Major Harris will win that Heisman Trophy before he's gone. Matter of fact, I may give it to him this year, give him the vote of confidence anyway, but being a sophomore, I don't think he'll win it. Marvin Allen, the carrier there. The tackle was made by Sean Smith. Somebody Tim Brant and Hank Scram within Sullivan Stadium. Excuse me. Somebody better give it to him before he leaves college and goes into the National Football League. <laughs> 35 seconds remain. It's a moot point. That'll be it. And I think Doug Flutie has effectively silenced his critics. Well, Doug said he had a handful of friends on the Chicago Bear team, and he had a handful of guys he didn't care for. And he walks off this stadium as the winner. Doug Flutie has never lost in Sullivan Stadium. So for Hank Stram, I'm Tim Brandt saying so long from Sullivan Stadium in Foxborough, Massachusetts, with the final score once again, New England 30, Chicago 7. CBS Sports coverage of the National Football League will continue after these words from your local station.